Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Brant Larson and on this video we get to talk about five causes of irritable bowel syndrome. Now GI problems are one of the more common things that I see in the office, especially on uh, new patient paperwork. A lot of GI symptoms, bloating, gas, whatever it might be, diarrhea, constipation, irritable bowel. Most of America has digestive issues and we're going to talk about why, what are the five causes of that. Now these are in no specific order, alright, there's not like one's more important than the other, they're all important. Number one here is food sensitivities. I've been telling people for 10 plus 12, 14, 15 years to get off of certain foods because it was wrecking their health. At first people looked at me like I had three eyes, like what are you talking about? And I've said this on different videos before. but it was like this, our culture hadn't caught up with that yet. And it was gluten, what do you mean I'm allergic to gluten or I can't have dairy or soy, soy or corn or whatever it might be. And now it's commonplace. Everybody knows someone who can't have a certain food, who can't have gluten or is staying away from corn or can't have peanuts or whatever it might be. Food sensitivities, if you have them, totally wreck the gut. And the longer you have them, the more it wrecks the gut. It creates leaky gut, uh, holes in, in that GI tract where these big proteins get through into the bloodstream and then your immune system starts to attack everything. So food sensitivities are a big one. Number two, faulty digestion in general. Now one of the issues here is that people aren't eating real food, right? We're drinking pop like it's going out of style and sugar constantly and candy and cakes and these various things that we call food, we call beverage, but it, it's really not. It's almost not fair. It's Actually, it's not fair to try to force our GI systems to try to digest some of the stuff that we make it do. It's amazing that we can even stand up upright and live the way that we do, um, you know, relatively okay for the most part, right? So faulty digestion is huge. Now, one issue with this is lack of acid. Now, a lot of people, a huge part of, of all the developed nations, people are taking antacids or some type of acid blocking drug. This is ludicrous. It's the exact opposite for 99% of people. I have a whole video on this one topic alone on acid because it's such a huge topic. Briefly tell you, it's lack of acid that's causing heartburn and GERD and all these different problems. Lack of it because your food is rotting. It's rotting. You can't disinfect your food. You're getting infections. All kinds of things. It's lack of acid. You cannot break down food if you don't have hydrochloric acid that your, that your stomach makes. And there's various reasons why people have a lack of it. Now number two B here, lack of enzymes. One thing is that because we're not eating good food. We're eating food that doesn't have any enzymes in it. We're supposed to be eating food that has natural enzymes to help break it down for us. And we're eating these non-foods. And that's one of the big issues. So one of the things that we do with people, we get them on enzymes. Get them on enzymes to start to help them break down their food more completely and, and, and uh, better. Three, something called dysbiosis. Dysbiosis is, has to do with the normal ecology inside, your, inside of your GI tract. So your small intestine, large intestine, even your stomach. Dysbiosis is when the normal microbiome or the normal um, um, you know, yeasts and candidas and things, because there are normal levels of that, are out of balance. Dysbiosis happens when it's completely out of balance. It's not the way it's supposed to. It's like if we went in and we just you know, took a torch to our lawn and just burned off all the grass there. And then we come back a month later and we go, well, why, you know, why isn't there any grass? Why is it just weeds? Well, you didn't plant anything. You didn't reseed it. So when we take these big bombs like antibiotics, or even if you've never taken an antibiotic, but you're eating conventional meat, you're drinking conventional dairy, which all has antibiotic residues in it, you are blasting your GI system and, and decreasing all the microbiome and what happens is the weeds grow back. They're usually stronger, no different than our gardens, our yards, or anything else. Dysbiosis. Number, now, so 3A, colon. You should have bacteria in your colon. But again, this dysbiotic process happens and the colon gets unbalanced. Then what it leads to is a small intestine. Now we have something called SIBO. Some of you may have heard of this, SIBO. Small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. 
You're not supposed to have these bacteria in the small intestine. They're supposed to be in the large intestine. But when this dysbiosis process happens, now you get bacteria where it's not supposed to be. So you get bloating, you get gas, you get this fermentation process in an organ that's not supposed to happen in. It's supposed to happen in the large intestine. So dysbiosis is a big, big issue. Number four, chronic infection. This is rampant in our society. One, because of the lack of acid. If you can't disinfect your food, you're going to be ingesting um, microbes, parasites, whatever it might be. But if you have strong stomach acid, like a dog, a dog can eat rotten meat and sterilize it. The average American, not so much. Our hydrochloric acid content is tanking in our bodies for various, various reasons. I'm not going to go into them on this video. But chronic infection is really, really important. Yeast, parasites, H. pylori, etc. Yes, parasites. The vast majority of the population has parasites. We see it all the time. We get crazy stories of people seeing things or passing things. They feel better than ever. They'll spike fevers for a little while. And then they clear something out and their life changes. Okay, so we, we know that these infections exist because we see them and our patients tell us about it and it gets kind of gross sometimes, but you get excited when you, your digestion has been screwed up for years and decades and now it's not. All right, no matter how gross it is, you get excited about that and you feel better and your sinuses clear up or whatever it might be and you feel amazing. So infections, this topic right here is just, it's so, so important. And number five, brain function. Now, more and more people, their brain function is, is not doing so hot. We see brain fog, anxiety, depression, antidepressant pills, uh, me medications that I see listed on new patient paperwork is skyrocketing. So many people are taking that. So what does that mean? It means the brain's not working right. And your brain runs everything. My arm doesn't work unless my brain tells it to you. My stomach doesn't work unless my brain tells it to you. And it has to give it the right signal. Tell it the right thing to do. That's one of the reasons why we have a lack of hydrochloric acid. It's not telling it to do the right thing for various other reasons and brain stress and whatnot. All right, so brain function is a really, really big deal with gut function. And a lot of your brain chemicals are actually made in your gut. So it's like this loop that just goes back and forth. If your brain's functioning well, your gut has a good chance. If your gut's functioning well, your brain has a good chance of functioning well also. Now, if you have any questions on this, if you want to get a hold of us, if you want to have a consultation with me to go over your digestive issues, to figure out, hey, why are you struggling so much? Why are you on medication after medication? So many of my patients are fed up with that model. They do not want the medications anymore. Not that they're not good and have their place, but so many people are just mad. They don't want to do it anymore. They want to get down to the root cause. Call this number, 651-982-1804. I know you learned something on this video, and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel or like this thing on Facebook, wherever you're seeing this, wherever you're watching this. Again, I'm Dr. Brant Larson, and uh, I'll see you again soon.